What if I told you that a tiny bit of math could help you create really cool and juicy movement? Well, that's exactly what damped oscillators can do. And today, I'm going to show you how to code and use them. Pretty exciting stuff. This is what we can achieve with damped oscillators. As you can see, it's creating a very natural and springy movement that could be a bit harder to replicate with an animation. Also, because it's controlled by code, you can use it dynamically. Okay, but what are oscillators? Oscillators are things that move back and forth forever. In that sense, it wouldn't be super useful, but we can add damping, which will reduce the movement over time. You can see it as a sort of friction if you want. If we go on Wikipedia, we can see the equation we need to use. Hold on, it might be frightening, but you'll understand. F is the force, which is equal to minus K, the spring force, multiplied to X, the displacement, minus C, the damping, multiplied by the velocity. If we rewrite this math equation into code, it would look like this. Force is equal to minus spring times displacement minus damp times velocity. We can then use this force to calculate our velocity by simply adding the force multiplied by delta to our current velocity. And finally, to update our displacement, we add the velocity multiplied by delta. Now, whenever you want to add movement into this system, you can just update the velocity and watch the system react. By playing with the two values, spring and damp, you can easily change the behavior of the oscillator. The stronger the spring, the more force you will have to come back to the default position. It will resist movement more. Damping, on the other end, is used to control how much the movement is going to be reduced over time. Having zero damping means the movement goes on forever, and having a huge damping value means the movement is stopped really fast. As you can see, the calculation is pretty simple and the usage too. It's cheap to compute, so use it as often as you want. Okay, so now that we know how to code this oscillator, how can we use it in game? In the project you can find on GitHub, link in the description, I have a few examples that I think can be used in many games. Let's take a look. The first example is rotation. You can plug the displacement result in the rotation of any node. I did it with the sword and the hinge. It works right away, no need to scale the value or anything. As you can see, it gives a nice springy swing effect. This can be used to animate an object reacting to a player colliding with it, something taking damage, or a weapon attack animation. I also use the rotation on the little blue player here. I make it rotate in the opposite direction of movement. You can easily add some randomness to the velocity input, that way you have different animations on the fly. I use the same value for the shader deform, as the deformation is based on an angle that you provide to the shader. If you're interested in this shader, I made it available on my shader experiment repo on GitHub and on Godot shaders, links in the description. You can animate position with this and I'm using it on the punching glove. This time, I simply multiply the displacement result by a value to have the right amount of movement I want. It might not be a perfect technique, but it's simple enough for me and it works. Finally, using the same scaling technique on the value of the displacement, you can animate the scale of an object. Animating the scale will give you a very cool springy effect that might be hard to animate. Again, the most interesting aspect is that you can add randomness to the force you're applying, but you can also change slightly the damping and spring force to make the animation more interesting and change over time. If you want to learn more about Game Juice and go further to bring your game to the next level, I made a course for that. In it, I go over all of the techniques I use to create Game Juice. I give you tips and tricks and I show you every step to go from a boring game to a cool and juicy one. Check out my Godot 4 Juice course on Udemy, link in the description. What do you think of this technique? Are you going to use it in your game? If you have other ideas on how to use it, please share with us in the comments below. And thanks a lot to the Patreon who made this video possible. You're awesome. If you want to see more, check out my video where I explain how I created a juice for Dashpong.